Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to look at the Auto Selection Tool that was introduced in Photoshop Elements 2018. You'll find the Auto Selection Tool over in the toolbox nested with other selection tools. It's located in the Select section of the toolbox in the lower right corner with the Magic Wand Tool, the Quick Selection Tool, and a couple of others. It's getting kind of crowded in there. I currently have the Quick Selection tool in that spot, so I'll click on it. And then we can go down to the Tool Options to make the Auto Selection tool active. The Auto Selection tool is the bottom icon. It looks like a magician's wand with three stars around it. So I'll click on the icon down there. Now you can see in the toolbox that it's the active tool because it's highlighted in gray. Let's look back down in the tool options and see what some of the options are that we have with this tool. First, there's three icons, New Selection, Add to Selection, and Subtract from Selection. You can tell which of the three is active in a couple different ways. First of all, it says right below them. Also, when you click on one to choose it, it gets a gray background behind it. It's defaulted to New Selection, which is what we want to start with. The next four icons determine what kind of shape you draw around the subject that you want to select. You can choose from a rectangle, an ellipse, or a freehand lasso, or a polygonal lasso. The way this tool works is you draw a shape around the object or area that you want to select, and it automatically makes the selection. Let's say that we want to select the two people in this photo. I'm going to zoom in by pressing Command plus sign on a Mac, or it would be Control plus sign on a PC, a couple of times so we can see our subjects better. It works best if you select each person one at a time. Let's start with the girl on the left. We have New Selection and Rectangle chosen in our tool options. I'll place my cursor above and to the left of the girl and then click and drag down and to the right. Once the girl is completely surrounded by the rectangle, I'll release the mouse button, and a selection is applied to the edges of the girl. You can see that it's not a perfect selection. It didn't select her hands or all of her shoes, and there's some areas of the background that were included in the selection, like under her arm. Now let's add the guy on the right to our selection. I'm going to click the Add to Selection icon. If I left it on New Selection, it would replace the selection of the girl instead of adding to it. So I'll place my cursor above and to the left of the guy, and click and drag down and to the right. Once the guy is completely surrounded by the rectangle, I'll release the mouse button. Now, in addition to our original selection of the girl, we have a selection around the guy. And again, it's not perfect. Some parts of him were missed, like his shoes, and even the edges of his arms and shoulders were left out. To get a better idea of what your selection looks like, you can temporarily switch to the Refine Edge dialog box. To do that, just click on the Refine Edge button located down in the Tool Options. In this case, we're not going to actually use any of the adjustment tools. We're going to use the viewing options to get a more accurate visual of our selection. And I'm going to move this dialog box over to the side so we can see our subjects better. So to get a more accurate visual of our selection, you can do that by clicking on this box labeled View. And when you do, you get a pop-up list of different ways to view your selection. The two options I use the most from here are on white or on black. It does what it sounds like. It allows you to view the selected areas as they would appear on a white background or with a black background. It defaulted to view on white. Now we can really see how bad the selection is. Not only are we missing parts of our subjects, but the edges overall are very jagged. Let's switch to View on Black, just so you can see how that looks. You can tell that it's a poor selection in this view, too. 
but because a lot of their clothing is dark, it was easier to see the selection when viewing on white. Since we were only using Refine Edge to view our selection results, I'm going to click on Cancel to close the dialog box. At this point, we have a couple of different ways that we could try to improve our selection. We could use the options for the Auto Selection tool, or we could switch to a completely different selection tool to adjust the selection. For example, we could keep the tool options set to Add to Selection, and then draw another rectangle around her shoe to get the shoe included as part of the selection. So let's try that. That actually worked okay, but I think this selection is so bad that I would probably not use this tool for this particular image. Instead, I would try selecting these two people with the Quick Selection tool. So, the Auto Selection tool didn't do a very good job in this photo. But to be fair, there were a lot of different tones and colors on the background that could make it hard to distinguish the edge of our subjects from their background. Let's try it on a photo where there's more contrast between the subject and the background. I have this photo open, and this photo has a pretty consistent background. Even though our options are still set on Add, since we didn't currently have an active selection, we can leave it there and click and drag around our subject, and it will automatically act the same as New Selection Mode. So far, the selection looks much better than the results we got on our last photo. I can see it missed some of the dress near the shoulder on the right side of the photo, but the dress gets close to the color of the background in that area, so it's not so surprising. I also can see that it included the small background areas between her arm and the dress on both sides. Let's see if we can go over those areas in subtract mode and remove them from our selection. I'll click on the subtract icon and then click and drag over those two areas. And I want to get as close into them as I can without including too much extra area. So that side and this side. It did a pretty good job on our uh, right side, but not so good on the left. Let's go into Refine Edge and see how it looks in there. So I'll click on the Refine Edge button to bring up the dialog box. It looks good viewing it on white. Let's switch to on black. I'll click the view box, and then from the pop-up menu, I'll double-click on black to close the pop-up and put our subject on a black background. Except for her shoulder area on the right side and that little area between her arm and dress on the left side, it looks like a good start for a selection. Besides tweaking the shoulder area and the arm and dress area, uh, it could use some smoothing out overall and some work on the hair. What I would do at this point is cancel out of Refine Edge by clicking the Cancel button. Actually, let's just do that. And then switch to a different selection tool to fix the shoulder area. I'd probably use either the Lasso tool or the Quick Selection tool to do that. I'll put links to tutorials below the video that show how to use those two tools. So then after getting the shoulder fixed, I would go back into Refine Edge and smooth out the edges of the selection and refine the hair. I'm not going to take the time to do that in this video because this is an overview of the Auto Selection Tool. But just know that after using the Auto Selection Tool, there will probably be some fine tuning that needs to be done to get a good selection. Let's go back to the Tool Options and I'll go over the other options in there. Under the Refine Edge button, there's a box labeled Sample All Layers, which means if you have multiple layers in your document, Elements will try to select all visible pixels where you use the Auto Selection tool. If you leave it unchecked, it will only select pixels from the active layer. The last option is a box labeled Constrain Selections, and I must admit, I couldn't figure out what it did. When you hover your mouse over it, um, the tool tips appear. 
and you can see it says constrain results to the inside of the selected region. Because they used the term selected region, I assumed it affected what happened after you have a selection. I ended up posting a question about how it worked in the Adobe forums, and thanks to Jeff A. for answering my question. It turns out selected region refers to where you draw your selection. I'll show you how Jeff illustrated it in his answer about how it worked. So to do that, I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool. Actually, first I'm going to create a new document. And then I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool to draw a square. And I'm going to fill the square with red. And then I'll deselect that. Now I'm going to place two horizontal guides and two vertical guides so I can use the guides to make the same exact selection twice. So i got to show my rulers and then just drag out. Let's put that a little closer. Drag out two horizontal guides and two vertical guides. So I'm going to do the same exact uh, selection twice. Once with the constrain selection box unchecked, and again with constrain selection checked, so you can see the difference. First with it unchecked. I'll place my cursor at the intersection of the top and left guides. Oops, i got to get the tool selected first. And I'll place it right on the intersection, the top and left guide, and then click and drag down into the right diagonally until I get to the intersection of the two guides in that opposite corner, and then I'll release the mouse button. So you can see, even though I just drew out my selection in between these guidelines, it selected this whole area outside of that part where I drew my selection. You can see the marching ants around there. I hope you can in the video anyway. So I'm going to deselect that and now I'm going to click on the constrain selection box and I'm going to draw that same exact selection. So I'll place my cursor in the upper left, click and drag, and when I get to the lower right I'll release the mouse button and this time you can see that it did constrain my selection to just the edges of where the guides are. Well, that's how the constrain selection option works. And that about wraps up this video on the auto selection tool. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.